Your physical security on your homestead or small farm is critical to your success in this lifestyle. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. We've had a number of challenges with a property that I'm managing, which includes uh, trespassers using ATVs and the slow progress of projects. Now, one of these sounds like it's going to impact physical security while they're both related. And we're going to talk about that. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead, if I haven't already mentioned that. My point being here is that the physical security of your family on your small farm or homestead is not necessarily better in a rural area. In fact, in a rural area, there's equipment stolen, there's animals stolen, there's animals molested, there's uh, fences that get cut for hunters, there's trespassing, there's a lot of different problems in a rural area that very often don't make the front page of news because they are perceived as impacting fewer people. The latest BLM riot riot or the the crime and stuff that happens in cities happens in the counties as well, but in a smaller volume. Now today, and I don't, I'm not trying to scare anybody. Now today you could have cartel activity in the backyard. But even when I was a kid, I was hiking out in the woods I'm on Amish property, checking things out, and I find a giant marijuana grow operation. This is in St. Mary's County, Maryland. The Amish were not growing marijuana. Somebody had done the same thing I was doing and trespassed on the property and planted out a grow area because this was kind of disused land. Um, And so there isn't any more of it today. It's just... It's just a reality. So again, your physical security is important, at least on your own property, because you don't want to be out feeding the chickens in the morning and have somebody in your barn stealing your tractor. And then what do you do if you walk up on that kind of person? Now, in a lot of the message boards and forums, they talk about, you know, we're just going to shoot them from the porch because this is the country and this is how we do it. Well, laws, rules, and applications still apply, even if you're in a rural setting. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the physical security, and the response to that security. I want to first say that any uh, equipment or a non-living thing, tools, equipment, and stuff, will be difficult to replace, but it is not worth more than a human life. So it's better in those cases to collect evidence and not engage in the person who's stealing because it could be, as uh, the sheriff was telling me, some crackhead with a handgun. Um, because that is a more common thing. Somebody is stealing for a reason. They're coming onto your property. They're grabbing chainsaws and uh, string trimmers and other tools they can turn into quick cash, and they're doing it because they have a drug addiction or they have a problem. Now, it's not an excuse. It is a a reality of life. And so someone who feels that you're taking away their what they most desire, what they're willing to risk legal prosecution, it, it may not be worth the engagement. However, if you are surprised by somebody, no different than being surprised by a bear, a coyote, a fox, or a hawk, or something that's going to hurt your animals, uh, you do want to have a firearm. You do want to be proficient in that firearm, and you do want to make sure that you could use it in your self-defense, and that you are disciplined enough not to use it in an unnecessarily offensive manner. What do I mean by that? Just because you're on a farm, maybe you got some hogs, maybe you got a cemetery, doesn't mean you can just shoot somebody. Okay, now I've made jokes about this, and I probably shouldn't joke about it because I'm in a position where you might take it as advice. But you see in the movies where somebody's out on the farm and they just vanish. That is not what we're talking about here. There may be a situation where harm may be coming of your animals or family, and you may need to necessarily... Uh, use a firearm in an offensive manner, but most likely that can be justified as defensive. While your personal self is not in danger, the the, uh, animal or your, your family member's lives are in immediate danger. I am not going to offer legal advice here, and then I'm also going to acknowledge that there's a spectrum between what's going on in South Africa versus what might go on here in the United States or in Europe, uh, but it's a reality that... things are changing things are dangerous so what do we want to do what we want to do is look at our property in layers just as we have the permaculture zones where we have zone one we want to basically uh, make sure that as people transition from the outside to the inside of your property 
As they move through zone 5, maybe hunters are in your zone 5 because it's an untouched wilderness area or it's maybe harvested every 30 years. Um, hunters may be in that area, so do you know whether they enter or exit from that area? Now, the perimeter of a zone 5 may be rather large, so we may want to concentrate trail cameras, for example, on the access roads in or out. We may want to periodically patrol the perimeter of our property. Now, when I say patrol, that doesn't mean you're marching around with a rifle, but it may be checking your fences for down trees. It may be uh, just checking your fences for cuts or breaks, and it may be also looking for new trails or activity, uh, considering the property line as a fence. So your trail clearing activity on your property line may open the opportunity for more people to track tra travel on your property however it tends to make people travel along defined routes where you can then collect evidence with a cellular trail cam cctv or other means do you see what we're talking about here we want early warning of individuals coming onto the property and we want clarity about who what when and where that individual is on that property so that if something should go missing you'll have a better idea about when or who made it go missing you, as people move towards your zone one, which is your household, and that should be the re point of retreat when it comes to something, an engagement on your property. And in a private consultation, we can talk in more details. I'm not trying to scare anybody here. I'm just trying to say if there was a bear coming into your property and it triggers a camera out on the, uh, the outer perimeter of your property and it's heading towards your chicken house, that is what you want to know. You don't, if it's headed towards exiting your property, that is not as important because uh, skunks and deer and bears and turkey and all that stuff will come and go on your property as they please because they're wild animals. But you do want to know if a human is coming on your property and moving towards your, uh, your barn where your tractor is, where you leave your keys in the tractor because you don't want to look for your keys in the morning. Can you see what we're talking about here? Early warning. Now, the next factor I kind of mentioned there is you don't want to leave your keys in vehicles. So I've had a sheriff's department out to my property because I have a little challenge with some ATVs and some hunters. And so I'm passing along some of the advice they shared. But it's a very real that if you're not locking up your equipment, that someone can walk off with it. So trailer hitch locks, uh, use of cords or, or cable to lock wheels on larger equipment. Removing the keys from larger equipment. You could use a lockbox on site that has a combination lock. Now, you might be saying, well, if I put the keys in a combo box, then now the bad guys know where all the keys are. But I'm saying, if you leave the keys in the ignition of your tractor, then they know where your keys are. If they break the box on the wall, we, show the, we can show the criminal intent to steal. If they just turn the key on your tractor, it's hard to know whether or not they're just borrowing your tractor and you're now going to have a more difficult legal process. So what we're doing here is we're establishing a, a zonal approach to safety. So around the building, you're going to lock stuff up. If you leave a tractor out in the field, you're going to take the keys with you. Now, a lot of excavators and tractors and stuff have push buttons. They don't need a key. You can just push a button and it starts right up. A lot of tractors, you can hotwire them. They don't really need a key. Uh, my point being, though, is that is there some form of positive barrier? So if there's a perimeter fence, that's one positive bar barrier on the property itself. If you have gates, so, things like that. If you put a camera on the gate and somebody pulls in a truck with a trailer on it to steal your excavator, then you now have positive information about them being there. You have a description of a vehicle. You have something to work on. If they go and if you park a piece of equipment out in the middle of a field and it wanders off, then you are in a situation where it's hard to evidence who made it wander off. So you may want to keep a trail camera, a cellular trail camera in the vehicle and just basically uh, put a post in the ground, not a put a post in the ground, but just hammer a stake in the ground or one of the, uh, the little metal step ins and then put a trail camera on your vehicle so that you at least know at what time did they either disable the trail camera or that they hopped into your vehicle when they should not have been hopping into your vehicle. Uh, a lot of farms that I've worked with, we have a designated area to park equipment. So there might be a shop and the parking lot of that shop or the front area of the shop is under CCTV. 
And so the majority of the equipment is returned to that location at night and parked. Or it is inside of an enclosure and then parked. So you might have a cattle enclosure, for example, that has a camera on the main stockyard where the water is so that you, you can monitor animal health. But if someone were to enter that space, they're going to walk through that camera's, uh, the camera's uh, zone of visibility, and you're going to get a positive identification as they're on their way to the tractor that you were, uh, maybe you're cutting the fields or something like that. Uh, some vehicles will have cameras inside them so that when you fire up operation, there's a camera on the operator. The key is, is know where these things are, install them where they're appropriate, and then be mindful that someone could jump in a piece of equipment and take off on it. Because it wouldn't be unusual to see a tractor coming and going from a larger property or to have someone come pick up equipment for repair. So we're talking about zones. As we move closer to the house or as we move closer to buildings of interest that have tools, do you have an alarm system? If someone were to kick in the door of your workshop, would you know the difference between they're in your workshop or they're in your house? Now, a lot of these things don't cost a lot of money. And some of these things are actually biological in nature. So, for example, geese. If you have a workshop and near the workshop you have livestock areas, the animals coming in at night can act as a deterrent or a early warning if you understand and know the habits of your animals. So there ought to be a real physical security plan. It needs to consider wildlife and humans. And then here's the last thing it needs to consider. The safety and well-being of your animals and the people on your property when it comes to just general bad stuff that can happen on a farm. If a tractor should fall on you or you, you break a leg out in the woods, would you have radios and know how to use them? so that you can communicate with base camp, which is primarily your zone one, in order to call for help. Do people know where you're working on the property? So if you're out there with a chainsaw, are you wearing proper protective equipment? And are you in a location where that you could be easily found? And have you let somebody know that you're at that location and when you intend to return? Now, a lot of folks with five acres or 500 acres can have the same problems. Do you have first aid kits readily available? Do you have a, a first aid kit in your vehicle that's suitable for common problems you might face, including a tourniquet because a chainsaw incident, as uh, Scott Vernon of Sustainable Homestead Institute keeps telling me, uh, typically has a thousand or more stitches. And so that's why I wear the, uh, the protective equipment that he insists I wear on his property. I wear it wherever I go because if I'm operating a chainsaw, there's certain types of procedures to operate a chainsaw that's going to protect my interests and safety. But I don't operate a chainsaw alone. I always have somebody know where I am or working with me while operating a chainsaw. I know on the YouTube and, and a lot of these uh, tr you know, videos about how to do agriculture, they, they gloss over these topics because they're not sexy topics. And they're not something you want to be thinking about all the time. But especially in today's economy, especially with the rising cost of food and the insecurity that comes with supply chain issues, more and more farms are targets for individuals who might just want to come in and grab a chicken. They might want to grab a goat. They might want to want. Uh, we had a farm around here that had a bunch of cows stolen, um, and they are also being agriculture is now increasingly a part of cartel activity. So when organized crime are raising farms, whether they're growing marijuana or they're growing vegetables or they're stealing cattle at the on the way to market. You need to be aware that farming is dangerous. And not only is farming dangerous, is it, it requires a safety plan. And that's the last thing I want to leave you with. The best value that we've delivered for many of our clients recently is a risk management approach to a safety plan. Basically, what kind of safety procedures do you have in your greenhouse? What kind of safety procedures do you have around animals? Many times these are just checklists, by the way. But is everybody prepared to know how to handle situations. For example, pigs. Pigs can run right up under you and you can end up with a concussion and then they will eat you. So are you prepared to work in pairs for the pig operation? Or are you handling smaller pigs rather than handling four or 500 pound pigs? In every area of your farm, just like we do zones, and each zone has particular activities in the permaculture design methodology, 
it, having an operational or safety plan or even a safety policy helps identify not only how we're taking care of and being good stewards of the land, but how are we protecting the individuals, their, get our guests, our family members, our livestock to have maximum health. After you've taken care of the, the core elements of your property, anybody uh, who's trespassing on your property, how do you handle that? What's the phone number to the sheriff's department? What is the procedure for engaging someone who's trespassing or not engaging someone who's trespassing because you have proper documentation about their trespass activity? We can help you develop these things for your small farm, homestead, or estate. And we can also help you implement these plans, some of which can be a booklet, a little tiny booklet that's available in different areas. So in, if you've ever seen next to the telephone, in the case of emergency call, it, it could be as simple as that. But in larger established uh, uh, agriculture, it could be um, you know, the phone numbers to the hospital, and then how are you going to get to the hospital? It might be where the farm jacks are located and always returning the farm jacks to the same location so that we can get that damn tractor off you. And by the way, to get a tractor off of somebody, you're going to need some 6x6s six or some two by, uh, some young 2x4s, and you're going to need a pry bar, and you're going to need some farm, uh, some farm jacks in order to lift the equipment off of somebody. But the equipment wouldn't be on you if the equipment was properly blocked when you jacked it up in the first place to do the repair. So you see what we're talking about? A lot of these training classes are regularly available. It doesn't require a lot of investment of your time to take a chainsaw safety class or to learn how to drop a tree properly or how to uh, tether something to drag it, drag it with a tractor. All of these things can save your life, even if you never get a home invasion or you never get somebody trespassing or you never get ATVs on your property. I'm just in hit with, with Prosperity Homestead. I hope I haven't scared you. I, this isn't meant to be uh, scary because these are actual things that happen on a regular basis across the, the world when it comes to farming. And they're all preventative. You can prevent, you can evidence, you can avoid these problems with a little bit of education and a little bit of planning. A safety guide with quarterly briefings of that safety guide for all family members and uh, staff that work on a property is one of the ways to start. And those safety guides are available. They actually come with a lot of the equipment that you have um, so that you can know that your operators are safe, and that your family members are safe, that your animals are safe, and that ultimately you can enjoy this lifestyle of freedom, of abundance, and food security. Again, I'm Justin Hit with Sustainable. Again, I'm Justin Hit with Prosperity Homestead. Visit, visit us at www.prosperityhomestead.com. Dot org to ask your questions. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next podcast.